Hi, my name's Richard Brown. I'm Chief Technology Officer at R3. We're the software firm behind the open source blockchain platform Corda. I published a blog post a few months ago about why I thought some of the claims being made for public blockchain technologies such as Ethereum for why they should be or could be applicable to the business domain were actually wrong. Um, I suggest or urge you to go read that piece, but to get you interested and to give some motivation, I thought I'd very quickly go through the three biggest claims I hear for why you should use public blockchain technology to solve business problems and why I think those three claims are wrong. So the first claim is, that's where the community is, that's where the developers are. As I show in my article, actually that claim isn't true and there are orders of magnitude, possibly two orders of magnitude, more people with um, skills in the Java ecosystem or other similar ecosystems who could easily be retrained, and I'm talking in a matter of hours, to code for something like Hyperledger Fabric or Corda. And therefore the claim that that's where the community and the developer ecosystem is doesn't actually stand up to scrutiny. And I worked through some, um, some worked examples with real figures to show that case. The second argument is that's where the innovation is. The public blockchains and Ethereum in particular, that's where the best technology is and that's where the fastest innovation is. As I also try to demonstrate in this piece, that isn't quite accurate either. It is good and interesting technology, but it was designed to solve a very specific problem in permissionless consensus. And when you look at the design um, goals that were addressed and the implementations that were built, um, they don't map well. Often they don't map at all well um, to problems in business. As you look at the, the 20 plus years of innovation in the Java ecosystem, the C-sharp ecosystem would be the same. You look at the libraries, the compilers, the skills, the, um, the, the even the training providers um, as, as an ecosystem for building to, to high quality applications more rapidly. Um, those existing ecosystems are just simply unsurpassed. There's also the issue which is publicly known but needs to be shared, which is the, the technology underpinning the public Ethereum blockchain is all slated for replacement. So you need to make sure you don't go live with a private solution that will be immediately end of life or obsolete. And the third argument I make is there's a claim that using public blockchain technology in a private context is somehow more secure because you can anchor your applications, you can anchor your data into the public blockchain. What I elaborate on in the piece is that the probabilistic finality characteristics of public blockchains, a direct result of proof of work, which is a direct result of the permissionless requirement they have for validators, leads to a problem for businesses because they need Finality of settlement, they, they can't deal with probabilistic finality. And what I argue in the piece is that um, you need different technologies solve different problems. And as architects and consultants, we need to be very clear and very precise with our clients about what problems they have and, and the right way to solve them. So I urge you to read the piece. Um, I can't do justice to it in a couple of minutes on this video, but if you've ever been persuaded or you know, argued to by a client that the Ethereum ecosystem is where the skills are, where the technology is, where the, um, where the um, innovation is and where the security Security is, and I urge you to take a look at this blog post because, as I hope I argue um, fairly neutrally, but clearly I have an agenda too, you'll see that those claims don't actually stack up to scrutiny. So, so do take a look, and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.